As developers, we all strive to write bug-free code. After all, the fewer bugs we encounter, the less time we spend fixing them, and the more time we can dedicate to building our product. But when it comes to testing the front end, things can get a little bit hazy. How should we approach testing the user-facing parts of our software? Well, in this video, we'll demystify front-end testing and explore some best practices to help you ensure a smooth user experience. So let's get right into it. Before we delve into the specifics of front-end testing, let me share a personal story. When I was a new software developer, I primarily worked on back-end projects. However, I was given the opportunity to tackle a front-end project, and I was so excited to write my first lines of code in the front-end. I built a web page and I integrated the right API calls and I felt really confident about my work. But when I demoed it in front of my team, I realized I had never tested it with real data and disaster struck. The page crashed and became unresponsive. It was incredibly embarrassing moment for a fresh graduate like me. And it took me a while before I regained my confidence in working on the front end again. That experience really taught me a valuable lesson about the importance of testing code. See, we test to weed out bugs before shipping, and we write automated tests to be able to repeat that process. As a backend engineer, testing APIs and business logic was familiar territory. However, front-end testing confused me initially. I, I couldn't grasp its true value because it felt like the front-end was constantly changing. How could we possibly write tests and remain relevant? While backend and fronting testing share similar concepts, there are some distinct differences. Backend testing focuses on the functionality of the server and the database, ensures that APIs are performant and that data is stored and processed efficiently. On the other hand, frontend testing focuses on the interaction between the user and the software. It doesn't need to know about the database it doesn't need to know about server-side code. Its function is to ensure that UI elements and user flows function correctly and provide a smooth user experience. Furthermore, the testing environment between the two can also be different. While backend testing doesn't typically need a browser environment, some types of front-end tests require a real or simulated browser. Now, front-end testing is also important to help find issues such as browser incompatibility, UI rendering discrepancies across devices, and asynchronous behavior. Testing user interactions and responsive layouts can be more complex in the front end due to the dynamic nature of UI components. So now that we understand the importance of front end testing and the differences from back end testing, let's explore some various types of tests that you can employ. First, we have unit tests. These tests target the smallest pieces of code, usually an individual function or method. Now, unit tests should execute quickly, and they require minimal setup. They help ensure the correctness of isolated code components. Next, we have integration tests. These tests work with larger pieces of code, testing how functions or classes interact with each other. Integration tests help verify the compatibility and the correctness of the code base as a whole. Now moving on, we have end-to-end -end tests. These tests are more time and more computation intensive. They simulate an entire user flow, testing the software from the user's perspective. End-to-end -end tests may or may not mock out the backend depending on the desired scope of the test. These are the types of tests that will typically use a real or simulated browser. Now, we also have snapshot tests. With each type of test we've described, we have increased the scope of the code tested. But this is where things break down. Snapshot tests capture visual or textual snapshots of the product and compare them against previous changes. Snapshot tests help identify unintended changes in the UI or the content. You can imagine a snapshot test as taking a screenshot of a web page over time and seeing if it's changed. If it has, that means you need to either fix a rendering element or you need to update the test. And there you have it. Although there are a few other types of front-end tests, these are the ones that we'll be focusing on for the rest of the series. We've covered the basics of front-end testing, including its importance, the differences from back-end testing, and different types of tests you can use. 
In our upcoming videos, I'll dive deeper into each type of test, explaining how to write tests and provide some great examples. So stay tuned.